Hello everybody, it's time for us to catch up on this week's midweek thought for the day, back to its usual Thursday slot. So um, this is where we um, go over the things that we've thought about this week in the Wednesday and Thursday services. Uh, we had two readings um, today, one very short from Zechariah, uh, Zechariah chapter 8, um, beginning at verse 14. For thus says the Lord of hosts, just as I purposed to bring disaster upon you when your ancestors provoked me to wrath, and I did not relent, says the Lord of hosts. So again, I have purposed in these days to do good to Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Do not be afraid. These are the things that you shall do. Speak the truth to one another. Render in your gates judgment that are true and make for peace. Do not devise evil in your hearts against one another and love no false oath for all these things that I, ha that I hate, says the Lord. And then um, the, um, um, the reading, the gospel reading for today is um, from John chapter 14 and is verses 1 to 7. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From, from now on, you do know him and have seen him. So those are the two readings for today. And we're coming on to uh, a little bit of Terry Waite prose and poem in a minute. And it's entitled Truth. So I don't want to say anything political about truth, but it's clear here that uh, God thinks truth is a good thing. Uh, in the Zechariah reading, I chose the Zechariah reading because it's close in time, um, chronologically, to when Jesus was living. It would have been part one of the later bits of the scriptures which Jesus knew, this kind of ex exhortation to speak the truth to make true arrangements with people and um, to encourage people to be truthful. And then Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. I use this passage quite a lot in funeral services uh, because I think it explains some really good things about uh, Jesus, talking about what will happen after we die, the images that he uses, and then he says to the disciples, you know how to get to where I'm going. And Thomas is the, um, he's the disciple who asks the questions that everyone else is too scared to ask. And Thomas says, Lord, we don't know. How, how, how do we know the way? How, we don't know how to get there. And Jesus says, I am the way. So at funerals, I talk about that on the very way-focused um, view of saying it's okay Thomas is saying to Jesus don't know the way and Jesus says it's okay I am the way I'm going to sort it out that still stands everything you've ever heard me say about that that still stands but what intrigued me looking at this passage this week was Jesus says I am the way the truth and the life I am the way the truth and the life and it's different it's much more complicated than some of the other I am um, passages. So I am the good shepherd, very simple image. Uh, I am the gate or the door, very simple image. Uh, I am the bread of life. That's a bit more complicated, especially when you think about communion, but still quite a simple image. But this is a multi-place multi image. I am the way, the truth and the life. Now, if um, any of you have had the uh, misfortune to have to read my um, MA dissertation, which is quite old now. Um, I looked a lot at truth, how we understand truth, um, how truth has been understood in the church, in the Enlightenment, 
Uh, so that the truth is something almost like a package of truth that you can hand over to something. Um, so often handed over from the pulpit by a male preacher. This is the truth. I give you the truth. You therefore have the truth if you take the truth from me. Um, philosophically, that doesn't tie in so much with where we are at the moment, um, with late modernity or post modernity, that truth is something which is perceived or or made. Meaning is made in collaboration. You can talk to me about that sometime. I can even send you a copy of my dissertation if you really, really want. But it's very interesting because the Quakers are people who were founded before the kind of Age of Enlightenment have really got going and the kind of understanding of how truth worked in that setting. And um, and they had that kind of, they kind of skipped modernity and ended up straight into late modernity. Anyway, complicated stuff. Um, so the Quakers have one way of worshipping, which is not in the prescribed way of trying to describe gods with words that the other traditions of Christian faith often do. Uh, once when I was in a curate, keen, young, in an ecumenical meeting surrounded by old men, um, I said, we can all only be wrong about God uh, because we can all only understand a bit of him because we are finite and God is infinite. So we can never, none of us can understand God. Which made them kind of take a breath and scratch their heads and think, keen young curate, she'll be over it soon enough. Anyway, this is a sermon with more questions than answers. And um, this is the little reading from um, Terry Waite's uh, book that we're looking at, uh, Out of the Silence. And uh, he talks about uh, his uh, journeying with Anglicanism and Quakerism. And then there's a poem entitled Truth. We'll come to that in a moment. So this is the little bit of prose. I was brought up within the Anglican tradition and have worked from a church base for much of my life. Although it was often suggested that I ought to become ordained, I never had such a vocation. And now looking back, I realise that I was right not to go in that direction. So many people think that I am a clergyman due to the fact that I was a member of the Archbishop's staff and I constantly have to correct that assumption. I remain grateful to Anglicanism for giving me so much but in recent years I have joined the Society of Friends, otherwise known as the Quakers, as a full member. Although it is not widely known, one may retain membership of the Anglican Church as well as being a member of the Friends. Perhaps I ought to be called a Quanglican. It was in captivity that I appreciated more fully the value of silence. And on my release, I became increasingly restless with modern Anglican services of worship. There seemed to be too little, so little opportunity for reflection and corporate silence was virtually totally absent. For many years, I had admired the Quakers for their ethical position and for their openness in respect of many doctrinal issues. I wrote a poem with which I am not entirely satisfied, but at least it contains some of the issues which I was trying to grapple with. So they're Terry Waite's words, and this is his poem. Truth. Where lies truth? Where lies the answer to questions that trouble a mind anxious for truth? Some say the church is where it may be found, an ex-cathedra statement, a rule, and examines life. The church may point to truth, embody it. Some say the Bible is the word of God, his word is truth. Should I then stone my neighbour, obey and ar archaic demands? Discernment must take place by frail humans who search for truth. The Bible is truth. Some say the spirit will guide into all truth. Where and whom is spirit? Does spirit speak equally to the sane and those disturbed of mind? In truth, we say we love. What do we know of the inner workings of mind where, in an instant, truth may vanish like a spectre in the night? 
we'll hear a lot more about truth over the next uh, few weeks as we run up to uh, the elections in America, as we work out how we are going to live as humans in our COVID world. And we'll hear about truth and lies. We'll remember what Jesus says. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So our thought for the day for this week, midweek thought for the day, um, we'll be back with some thoughts on Sunday. It's a Zoom service on Sunday. If you'd like details of how to join on Zoom, please let me know um, and I'll post the talk from Zoom. Okay, speak to you soon. Bye.